In this video, I'm going to talk about guidance and counselling in higher education, particularly how a teacher can support students' learning and study part, and teachers' role and possibilities to support students' studies, learning and professional development in the study field. We will look at the issues of guidance and counselling from the perspective of a teacher. First, we can ask what is guidance and counselling about? If we think about higher education, guidance and counselling are pedagogical processes of supporting students with their studies, learning, development of expertise and making career plans after graduation. There are many kinds of single tasks for helping students, for example, to learn academic study skills, writing master theses, or contacting future employers. These processes are very personal and include a variety of individual experiences. This makes it pretty demanding and if we compare it to teaching, the main difference is that there might not be any single goal which is shared by all students. In general, guidance and counseling aims to support individuals' own agency in making most of his or her life and career. Agency refers to individuals' capability and capacity for an active role in your own life, studies and career. It is active engagement and action making in your own life. It is not only making most of your studies and career, but also voluntary work, free time, hobbies, family life, etc. It means that a person takes responsibility of his or her own choices and action. Agency has also a relational aspect and social dimensions. In higher education, this means that a student is responsible to take care of his or her studies as a member of academic study community. Teacher's role as a guidance provider is to support the agency of, the, of a student in studies and future planning. If we compare it to teaching, the main difference concerns the goals and content of the process and the role of a person providing guidance and counselling. Every student is an individual and a study counsellor, a career counsellor or a well-being counsellor can't define beforehand the goals or the content of the process. But how and where a teacher can support these individual processes and the progress of study part, graduation and employability. Individual students have questions concerning their possibilities and choices and the ways in which they can influence their own future. When they are studying, having workplace training, doing study tasks with their peer fellows, enjoying free time and hobbies, there comes every single situation kind of questions where individuals, individual students are forced to think about their life and future. Mark Savikas has called these the starting points for a person's life design and future planning. A meaningful career planning and study part is based on positive answers to these future questions 
students ask from themselves. Students need to solve the questions about a possible future and the ownership of that future, their own wishes and the ability to achieve these futures. These, as Savikas contends, are the key elements in competence coping behavior and future orientation. These issues relate to mapping one's wishes and aims and to evaluation of possibilities of attaining those wishes and aims. Furthermore, an adequate study orientation can assist students in constructing a meaningful life in the years ahead. Thus, we have called this kind of study orientation as a wider working life orientation, because it is actually all about career issues, about future and employability, the life after graduation. In our model of pedagogical working life horizon, we try to describe the key issues in guidance and counseling in higher education. As said earlier, the starting point is the awareness of the career concerns and future questions of individual students. Like in recent learning theories, career learning is seen as dealing with personal background knowledge. We need to understand that students are preoccupied with personal identity searching based on their own aptitudes and interests and about the suitability of the field they study. They have questions related to education, which focus on the qualifications and competencies obtained through, through education and studies. They are uncertain about the requirements of working life and about their possibilities in the future labor market. All these questions are activated in the horizon of the experiences individual students have during their studies. They listen to lectures, take a part to the seminars, talk with peer students, volunteer in projects, but also work part-time during studies. The concept of Horizons for Action refers to the experiences students undergo during education and to the possibilities for opening new doors in their lives. From an educational viewpoint, every situation is a possible place to create more understanding about yourself your personal goals and interests, opportunities, structures, and the means to achieve these goals. So, guidance and counseling is present in every pedagogical situation in a way of supporting students, making sense of themselves, their knowledge and skills, learning and career goals, but also building up an active, responsible attitude and agency in their own lives. In the model, the pedagogical horizon for working life describes the variation of the places where we can support students to think about their future career and studies. We pedagogical tools. We can support students' own activity to take responsibility for action. This means that study and career guidance are embedded in pedagogical practices, in lecture halls and seminar rooms, in single study tasks. The role we take as a teacher has consequences to a role of a student. If students are passive listeners 
and we learn what encourages them to think the application of the knowledge. They might not be able to develop reflective skills for future working life. As Anne Virtanen, researcher who has studied learning working life skills in higher education, has said, you can learn working life skills inside a classroom if there is a certain kind of interaction between students and a teacher, and if students' previous knowledge and experience are involved in learning processes. This is quite simple and sometimes very difficult because there are so many individual students in our classrooms. There are two key elements combining guidance and pedagogy, namely reflection and inquiring attitude, which are present in also career guidance learning processes. Reflection and inquiring attitude are involved in learning processes, but also in career learning, and they are intertwined in each other. In higher education, there are, there are also particular specialized services for study guidance and career counseling. We have study advisors, mentors, tutors, supervisors, and career counselors who have a responsibility for providing guidance and counseling and supervision, for example. These practices are one context in the horizon of students' experience. We want to highlight the importance of having a particular place for both reflecting all the experience students have and focusing to career issues. Quite often in teaching, the focus is on skills and knowledge, knowledge as a basis for developing your working life expertise in future. And this knowledge is mostly shared with other professionals in the field. In career guidance, it is about what I want to do with my knowledge and skills, what kind of values and interests I have, how can I make most of my life. These individual questions need time and place to reflect. This means that in curriculum, there is need to be a place for this kind of career reflection. Pedagogically, these interventions are very individual driven processes. However, at the same time, when career processes are individual, they are also very social because basically our identity is built up in relation to the other people. Very often we teach groups and then we think that guidance and counseling should be given to individuals. However, awareness of one's possibilities and development occurs through active participatory involvement in creating knowledge of the self and the surrounding world. There is a strong social element in career learning too. The benefits of collaborative activities, dialogue and learning from one another are valuable also in the implementation of study and career planning in studies. The peer group and peer support can play a key role. They can be seen as the most important network developed during one's studies. In the best possible case, case students may share experiences broaden their views and learn from each other. Peer support can be utilized in several ways as part of structured 
pedagogical activities. In addition, working together prepares students for, for one of the most important working skills in current working life, the ability to collaborate with others. In conclusion, we should think guidance and counselling as a holistic pedagogical issue in higher education. We should see it as an individual process in supporting and strengthening students' own agency and responsibility of the goal setting and working for achieving these goals. However, these individual processes need to be fundamentally social as individual processes occur, occur and are intertwined in becoming a member of academic study community and later the communities of working life. If we think about the everyday work of a teacher, guidance and counselling focus on individual processes. And for a teacher, it is a good to reflect which processes are present in my pedagogical practices. Here are some example of, examples of these processes. We may deal with learning processes, but also with skills identification in teaching. There might be important processes of increasing self-awareness involved in learning. A study or a career counsellor might deal with processes of building up opportunity awareness and developing career management skills. The process of well-being might be present in every situation, as the idea is that we educate well-being students to be well-being professionals in working life. These individual processes occur in different ways in different contexts. This means that you as a teacher need to increase your own awareness, your pedagogical awareness, which kind of student processes you are working with in particular pedagogical practice. It is also about drawing borders for your own work and focusing on the most relevant issues in your job. The division of providing guidance and counselling is important to note when we try to define our own tasks and roles as a guidance provider. One very much used model of guidance and counselling is the holistic student-centred model of guidance, introduced by Watts and Van Esbroek. This model highlights the division of pedagogical support of learning processes and study guidance, the tasks for career guidance and employability issues, and the social psychological support for personal growth and specialized well being counseling. This model calls for the integration of the expertise of teachers, counselors, and other professionals outside the university, but within the context of collaboration across all areas of guidance and counseling. University teachers have their own responsibilities and their tasks are linked to the formal function of teaching. Specialized career services and healthcare professionals have their own tasks and duties. However, the most important issue is the collaboration and discussion about the roles and tasks of of staff members and other professionals. Like we think 
that students should not deal their study and career concerns by themselves just alone. Also, the guidance and counselling providers should do cooperation and share their concerns and questions about the roles and tasks in guidance and counselling.